very good morning to all the participants present here. I take a privilege to welcome you all for this one week of international FTP on control theory and application. It's a privilege to introduce Dr. S. Narayan Ayer, sir, for the second session of One Week International FDP on Control Theory and Applications. Dr. Narayan Ayer, sir, was born in 2nd July 1942. is passionate in teaching and most of the fundamental subjects like electrical circuits, signals and systems, control systems, digital signal processing, and engineering mathematics. He completed BSc, BE, MSc, and PhD. He has six years of industrial experience in companies like NDDB and Amul Dairy. He has 42 years of teaching experience. He, is, he served as a professor in NIT Durgapur and in R&D at Sengen's College of Engineering, Kottayam, Director and Dean of NMAMIT, NITE, and Visiting Professor at BS, BMS IT, Bangalore. He has several publications and attended many conferences. He wrote a couple of books like Digital Control Systems, Signals and Systems, under C-Gage Publications, Book in Process is con Control System and Circuit Analysis. He has many technical papers in IEEE transaction Hello. of Francis, AASE International Journal of Applied Engineering Research, etc. He, he worked as a, he chaired national and international conferences, conducted several short-term courses for teaching in engineering, conducted several faculty development programs for engineering colleges for teachers, on core subjects like electrical, electronics, and been a member of doctoral committee for several research students. He is a reviewer of IEEE CAS and reviewer for technical book, book publications of EMH IK Internationals. With this short introduction, I introduce I, I welcome you, sir, for this one week international FDP on control theory and applications. Thank you very much, uh, dear Sarat. I welcome all the participants. Are you able to hear me? Yes, yes sir, we can hear you. We can oh, thank you. Uh, without seeing them, without interacting personally, we are the first time taking similar courses due to the ah. pandemics and whatnot. Uh, let my, my idea of uh, Entering into this uh, discourse or a lecture is assuming that all of you are teacher, although not a majority of your teachers, you should adopt certain methods to teach the subject. The subject is this, for example, along with the DSP, circuit theory, they're all terror for the students. Majority of the students uh, do not be, find themselves ease at ease to learn these subjects. So it is in our hands to teach them. In a way, it is simpler uh, and they can understand. Further, they can develop as days pass on. Uh, looking ahead, what we are trying to um, look into are conventional control theory and performance characteristics. I won't be able to complete the whole lot of the syllabus, but uh, major items I will cover will be the system description as an OD. OD stands for the very common terminology we use is a ordinary differential equation of dynamical systems. Then what exactly is transfer functions? Then we will uh, jump into the performance characteristics. In that we confine ourselves to two domains. One is time domain analysis and the second is a frequency domain analysis. In time domain analysis, we'll restrict to look in what is step response, time domain specifications, and the poles based on these specifications. And the frequency domain, we will just touch upon body plot and polar plots and frequency domain specification. 
and look into a little more in depth on naked criteria please remember i have chosen these topics not because there are no other topics but these are the topics fundamental topics for control systems and the teacher is like you certain points and those points are stressed here rather than teaching how to derive all those things but perhaps i might use some derivation to show where teachers also fall down to explain certain aspects <clears throat> so yesterday is a talk uh, a professor pavan we would have been uh, i mean uh, switching on to one one basic concept that uh, any system any systems performance is based on either the differentiation of certain variables or the accumulation of the changes which is nothing but integration of these variables so for any system to be uh, understood its dynamics to be understood its performance to be characterized we need to write an integral differential equation and this turns out most often a differential equation and this differential equation describes a system perhaps it is so simply said but derive the differential equation of a system it needs a lot of knowledge on the physics of the system and other interactive uh, phenomena these equations which we in general we derive will be not even can be non linear but it is very difficult to analyze a non linear system why generally for non generally i say for non linear systems uh the method of a solution of a of an equation mostly differs from type of equation to other equation the, i can't say there is no uniformity but in general it lacks uniformity of approach if a problem is some of this nature do that one okay hello participants tell me card so can you hear yes, sir we can hear you sir please oh, fine thank you for because there's a lot of disturbance uh, this way that way so we we we, uh, we we were discussing that any system uh, can be represented by integral differential equation and in general systems are non linear in general in fact i can say universally there is no linear system all are non linear systems only but it is very difficult as i said to analyze uh, non linear equations each each type of equation will have a different approach uh yesterday you would have heard a professor talking on the phase plane techniques that is one way of analyzing certain non linear system but even then also you have to approximate so the word approximation is a boon for us so by approximating a non linear system into a linear one it is easy for us to uh, analyze it there is a occam's razor criteria we call generally which tells you that if a thing can be understood with less complication more simpler one that is a better way of understanding than with so many parameters which are yet to be understood so based on that we switch on to the analysis of uh, linear systems and um, with that when we say linear i want to introduce one more thing that when we say linear we uh, mean that the system this is very important this you must stress when you teach the students the linear system has a dumped parameter that means uh, even if you take a resistor the resistance is as if at one definite point not throughout no it's not distributed like your uh, overhead lines 
whose impedances are distributed. We don't want that. We assume that the parameters are dumped into one spot. So, the, and a system is time invariant. It behaves at nine o'clock or 10 o'clock or any other time the same way. So when a function of t behaves in a way, it should behave same way as one function of t plus 10 or t minus 10, bo both of these, left or right. Based on that, we uh, go into the basic equations of a linear system. This I will quick, quickly go through. We have a differential yeah. We have a differential equation, a n d power n by d t power n c, etc., plus a naught c equal to b m d power of m by d t power m b naught r. Remember, the way of writing the equation will vary from book to book. People may write a n associated with the d n by d t n. Some books use, mostly British books use, a naught associated with the dn by dtn. Their argument is the index and the indices, they sum up to n. This is one way of putting out. For we, we won't go much with this uh, notation. We will take to begin with a n dn c by dt n, a n minus 1 d to the n minus 1 by dt to n minus 1 c, etc. Equal to same similar way uh, the, on the right hand side. Let me tell you one thing. On the left hand side, what we have is the characteristics of the system. These, these that is a differentiation of first order, second order, third order, etc., coming out based upon the system. On the right hand side, what is the forcing function that makes system work? They have, how is their rate of change behaving? How is the rate of rate of change behaving? That's what is reflected on the right hand side. So we call this right hand side as a numerator dynamics. We'll come to that. And left hand side as the dynamics of the system. This equation can refer to the dynamical behavior. And R denotes, we strictly speaking for a mathematician, he will like to have C of T and R of T. But that will become long write up. So we have cut short the writing. The C stands for C of T. And uh, one important thing that we should remember here is, when we see the input, this is a, this you can note down. In fact, this is the place where control system diverse, diverse us with uh, power systems or any other thing. The input refers here, not the input to a system, this you must understand. Suppose you want to regulate a fan, that is control a fan's speed. The input is not the power input which we give. That is not the input here. What is the input which we mean here for controlling the fan speed is the regulator, that the amount by which you turn the regulator knob. So the input here may be an angle by which the knob is turned. It is not the power, the, not the power, AC power, which you give. Therefore, this is where the students do mistakes in deriving equations of uh, DC motor control, etc. We, we, we will come to that. With <laughs> the input is the controlling input, not the power input to system. Input is for the fan, the regulator of the fan, which we have in your house is the angle by which the knob is turned rather than the power. It is not the power, it is a knob angle in this example. Now, to obtain um, the output to any general input, with the equation which we saw some back, to any input R, you get the output C of T. And we have interest in knowing what is the output for certain types of inputs. We'll come to the types shortly. The general input we call is a step, ramp, and harmonic. We'll come to that shortly. We use Laplace transform techniques 
to solve this ODE. ODE means again ordinary differential equation. Note this point with zero initial condition. With zero initial condition. That means system is relaxed. If it is not relaxed, the methods are all different, something else we have to look into. So you should stress in the teaching that it is zero initial condition from which we start. That is, system is initially relaxed. With based on that, take Laplace transform, we get this uh, A and S power of N, where this S power of N was a place where D power N of DT power N of C was there. So this C becomes the C of S here. And this is a simple equation. And the CS is a function of uh, S. RS is a function of S of the input function. This we express in terms of a rational polynomial. For a control engineer, rational polynomial is this. A polynomial in one m to power divided by another polynomial of n power, n. And these coefficients, a is a n, a n minus 1, etc., etc., bm, bm minus 1, and b naught, they are all constants. So this will be something like 3s square plus 4s plus 9 divided by sq plus 18s square plus 17s plus 14. Well, something like that. They will form, form of this c by r. This is called a system transfer function. The system is the one which you saw in the previous ODE that this is a system which uh, this is a system into which the um, sorry, this is a system which reacts to this kinds of uh, inputs. So the transfer function is uh, the ratio of the coefficients of Rs by the coefficients of Cs with a relaxed system or a zero initial condition. Fine. As many times as possible, you must stress the system is relaxed till the students come to understand that a transfer function is what it is. Let us take um, a small look into this uh, uh, transfer function. I carry that this top, the numerator is of degree m, m for uh, Mumbai, and uh, denominator is for n, n for New York. So the degree of numerator is m, degree of denominator is n. So let us see some properties which we have to fix, uh, some conditions which we have to fix for uh, these values of m and n. It can't be arbitrary. So transfer function is a rational polynomial in s. The degree of new, uh, the, the, the numerator, numerator polynomial is P of S. That means the, 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 the top BM S power of N, this is, a, this is your uh, uh, P of S and this is your uh, Q of S, okay? And uh, for this uh, degree of uh, numerator is M and that of denominator is uh, N. We always say, the transfer function is heavy at the bottom. It is, say, you, you should, you would have seen some uh, dolls with heavy bottom and light head. So it will oscillate. It will never fall down. It is something like that. You should think of a polynomial uh, in the numerator and the polynomial in the denominator. The M is uh, less than N, not even equal to, notice please. M is less than N. If M is a numerator of degree two, N can be three, four, five, six, anything. So that is known as strictly proper transfer function. Somebody, oh, M is less than or equal to N, then oh, it is proper, but not strictly proper. We will come to this. M is equal to N is called biproper, which is never used in generally any of your electrical or mechanical or electronic system. This will never happen. M is greater than N will never happen anywhere in any of the engineering systems. It's called improper uh, transfer function. Why is so important about M less than N? A degree, an exception to this rule is an electric circuits where you have impedance function. Impedance means admittance 
or impedance. They are combined together as adpedance. AD for admittance. Next is for impedance functions in S. There it might be that the numerator is more than the denominator. Remember in impedance or admittance function, there's some treatment is something different. So based on the strictly proper function, the, uh, the rule or the, the limiting rule is this. You should be able to understand. As S goes to infinity, GS goes to zero. Anyway, S goes to infinity, we'll see much uh, trans, uh, the Laplace term, some people might know what it means, is initial condition, final condition, etc. Now the roots, the, the, the polynomial PS, it has a roots. Roots means PS equals zero, what are the roots of S? They are known as zeros of the system. And uh, the roots of QS, where QS becomes zero, they are called poles of the system. Okay, um, I've given here some types of polynomial forms, time constant form, pole zero forms. This you can go through and of course uh, that needs no much of uh, explanation. Okay, these are the different uh, types of uh, I mean, transfer function you can uh, make from one, it is the other one can be derived. Okay, it is I'm just telling you for, a, for information. Let us take an example of uh, an op -amp circuit. Again, I'm not going into details of the circuit analysis, but I am taking this as a circuit point of view. So this N, what you call N here is, and as well as M are the, uh, they are the same potential as a ground because of this uh, virtual grounding system. So take the uh, Kirchhoff's current law, the current coming out of N, uh, some of the two currents going out of n should be equal to zero. So this is a current going to the left side, this current going upward. That's going to be zero. So we have a equation between Vp and Vi. Vp is intermediary voltage. Then we have a, at, 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 the, at, the, at the node, a virtual ground M, we have a second equation that is the current this way is equal to plus the current this way should be equal to zero. So Vm minus Vp by Z3, etc. We get this equation, a relation between uh, uh, Vp and Vi and V0 and Vp. So Vp you can eliminate and get V0 and Vy, Vi. So this is the uh, transfer function of uh, the op -amp circuit given. Assume that Z1 and Z3, the series ones, are the series combination of R and C and the shunted two on Z2 and Z4 or the parallel combinations of R and C, same value of R for easiness, for same value of R and same value of C. Just to make it more complicated, you can have R1 and R2, C1 and Z2, doesn't matter. So we will have V0 by VI, uh, mostly uh, of this nature. I want to stress one point here. This also is a strictly proper transfer function, where this is of second degree, and this is of fourth degree. So we call the relative degree, that is a degree of four, that is denominator, minus two is equal to two. So this is the relative degree of the transfer function, a terminology normally used in advanced uh, I mean, com uh, I mean, uh, control systems, okay? Now, let me go, uh, another mechanical system, uh, a mass, a spring, and a damper system. And I teach this one we call M, K for spring and B, B for bombing, uh, for a damper. So we call sometimes this as MKB system. Sometimes we call it as a M for mass, K for spring, and B is used for the damping system. So MKB system, if you communicate easily what system is, okay? If you apply a force to this simple, this is a very simple system of, uh, uh, of what we can think of an MKB system. More complex system can be analyzed. So in this MKB system, if I apply a force, assume that uh, this is an elastic or some damping is there and you are hanging a, a body, you know, uh, important thing here. So I'm applying a force F, this F has to make M move by a distance X. When movement of mass by a distance X is uh, executed, it needs a force for that. 
that is m x double dot or d square x by d t square into m. So this is accelerating force on m, and this force is this movement is opposed again by the spring k. The spring k is also opposing, and the damping b also is opposing this movement. So we, they, this f has to overcome this also. That means the damping force b into rate of change of x. And the spring force K into X, so the force F applied should overcome m x double dot b x dot and k x. So, by Newton's law, if it has to move by a distance x, F T must be equal to m x double dot plus b x dot plus k x, which, when applied with the Laplace transform, the zero initial condition gives me this as the uh, transfer function. Remember, what is m here? M equal to zero, and n equal to two. Okay, n equal to two. N equal to two. So n equal to two. M equal to zero. So relative degree is two. This transfer function it is second order system. Just uh, to tell students if there is a concept of oscillation is there in this. Just slightly hits. On the head of this mass m, slightly, just hit and remove. That is equal to an impulse given. A small hammer hit with the hammer, very small force you give, and um, what will happen to m? It will oscillate, oscillate for some time. That oscillation will die down and come back to normal position where m was originally. So this is an example of a small oscillation which is damped. You will come to this oscillation just shortly. Okay. Now, uh, we have to introduce one one word here. Okay. Sorry. Uh, before we go into that, it is not enough if you explain the dynamical equation of a system, Ellen. It is not just an equation in just giving you force and obtaining your response. It is a control system where what we have given, does it yield the required result? As teachers, all of you know that we nowadays uh, ACT has introduced a scheme called feedback. Whether you like the feedback or not, it is there. The feedback is meant to make any amendment to your improvements. Sometimes some teachers are very slow, some are very fast. So we'll come to that slow and fast very shortly. So the feedback tells you the output, look, the output which is now obtained is not what I want. Go back to the example of the uh, fan regulator. You turn the knob, you see the speed of the fan. No, it's not sufficient. So you increase that input or it is too much of speed, decrease that turning. So this reference to output, and accordingly, making an amendment to the input is called a feedback system. There are many definitions of feedback systems. Each book in his own English fancy uh, do that. But a closed loop system, that means the loop is closed. But what do you mean by loop is closed? Yes, what I give, I know what is coming out. Otherwise, what will happen? You, you just uh, throw out things and whether it hits the target or not, we don't know. That's open loop. Closed loop means there is a report back. Somebody is reporting you. Look, the stone you have thrown does not hit the mango. Who is that person? Your own eyes. So the eye will act as if it's a feedback element. The closed loop system uses the measurement of the output signal. It measures the output. Has it hit? How far it is? Is it two up, two down? Suppose you are throwing mango, uh, stones to mango rather. Uh, whether it has hit the mango or not, has it has a stone gone very high or very low? 
or did not, did not give, go even that zone all these things will you will see with your eyes your eyes are measuring the output and comparing with what you want what you want is the very like you know i want to hit the mango and uh, there from generate an error signal look last time you threw so too fast so it went away so make it little shorter okay angle was not sufficient by which you threw the stone adjust the angle so these are the error signals which tells you how to uh, actuate the controllers or compensators there are few terminologies which you use in the control uh, um, in kingdom kingdom of control these are the uh, things generally we use uh, in your control system now let me let me give one more thing here the plant is a word normally use the system okay the control element is the one that use which uses to control in our case the regulator or the fan regulator it could be electronic regulator like something like that feedback elements you have seen with your eyes that stone did not hit the mango and you tell your brain look it was too high or too short or too much head up so these are feedback element they sense and they send a signal called feedback signal so when i measure there may be some some noise come what do you mean by noise the noise of your measurements your measurement may not be right suppose you are looking uh, in the same direction of the stone going <laughs> so you may not know the differences so some error may be there some noise may come in the plant might be disturbed there may be wind blowing <coughs> and the mango may be shaking or swinging so there may be disturbance there may be noise in your measurements so these um, these are <coughs> these are major items which which makes the analysis quite difficult of the control systems what are they the disturbances and the noise people are working on that to come out of uh, these disturbances and noises there is separate uh, study by itself now let us take a simple um, feedback system few terms i stress again and again it is how you teach how you teach this is more important it is not that you don't know all these derivations you are better than me in these, these derivations but i want to stress certain points which you might or might not have done so far and um, that's where students do miss lot of uh, concepts or they mis misunderstand things look the feedback signal first of all does not reduce the output for example i am measuring i, I there is a voltage regulator i am measuring the voltage and comparing with the zener circuit uh, whether the voltage is what i want i want 110 volt just get so the error is that difference of uh, what i want and zener setting and the part of the output this is the error so that doesn't change your uh, voltage unless the feedback system is loading it so here also same thing these feedback systems should not load the inputs this is an important thing which you should never miss uh, a conceptualization of this feedback this yet should not load the c okay. so c is in general it so what what is what is a regulate uh, r is a the regulatory input and something you have got here as uh, the the feedback something you have got here that is uh, multiplying the output in by h h is a function of s remember that one thing i want i have seen many even technical papers of experts i have seen this mistake uh, almost everywhere committed uh, let, let me ask this question of course i cannot uh, hear your answer but you may you may hear your own answer uh, uh, let us take uh, i mean uh, a simple block diagram which you may know or even a signal diagram whatever it is x is the input y is the output and this is f is the uh, the, the the property of the block 
that uh, multiplies the input to get me the output. Should I write y is equal to x into f for a mathematician this is correct or f into x. To, to answer this question, I will normally ask in the classes also, what is Ohm's law? Can you give me the formula for Ohm's law? So they say if I is a current, R is the resistance, then voltage across the resistance is V equal to I into R. That's what it, you have been taught even in schools. V equal to IR. IR is my, my name. So I don't want my name to be in a voltage. I say this joke, but they understand it. Even many of my students who are about to retire now, even have keep being, they are also keeping their class notes. Even now they say that those jokes we note down, sir. Here, it is not X into F. It should be F into X. For example, if we say, uh, in an equation, you may you may write down 3x or x3. You write only this one, 3 into x. So the variable comes on the right-hand side, post-multiplying side, post-multiply, not pre-multiply. should multiply with the 3. So before knowing what, it should not come in with that. 3 is there, then the, 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 the input or the portion function. Because... As very uh, rightly yesterday's uh, talk, you may remember that these are also used, these equations are used in a multivariable system where matrix is the motherland of this. So when you multiply the matrix, you have to be very careful, okay? A square matrix with a column vector, not column vector into a square matrix. Square matrix into a column vector, where column vector is a variable, and we don't write column vector into the square matrix. So be careful in this usage. Okay, now that, that's the main thing I want to tell over here in writing any of these things. I put CS equal to G into E of S. Okay, CS is equal to G into E of S. And what is E? The reference R minus what is fed back. What is feedback is uh, H into C. So that's what is written over here. So, we have uh, in this equation, we can, this, this derivation is not nothing much in beyond the simple algebra. Cs equal by Rs equal Gs by 1 plus Gh. G into H. Okay. Uh, there are many things over here also when you take matrix analysis. This 1 plus Gh, I will drop the of S, of S, etc. In fact, 1 plus Gfs into Hfs, I should say. But for brevity, I say 1 plus GH, GHS we call. That is equal to 0. This denominator equal to 0. is called a system characteristic equation. This is the character of the system. This tells you what the system is. Is it obedient or disobedient? System? The system calls which are the roots of 1 plus GHS is uh, the one that decides the stability of the uh, system. Now we'll go to the, the time domain analysis now. We'll go into step response, transients, something on time response, and that's a time domain specification, and something on poles. Okay. So this is a review of what you have seen already. Order is, is equal to first order, second order, depending upon the degree of the denominator, not of the numerator. What is the system? I said that. Uh, the left hand side, the, the coefficients uh, with the a n and a n minus one, that is the that system dynamic. So their roots are the system characterization. So we have the system degree, the degree of the denominator polynomial. Or if you remember that a n, etc., the, the, the left hand side uh, degree. It can be first degree, second degree, third degree, and so on and so forth. In fact, uh, it, to be surprised, one of my uh, PhD students uh, trying to reduce a 31st order boiler systems, 31 a degree, 31st order boiler systems. Response characteristics, the terminology we use, um, 
for uh, analyzing response of this system for some specific uh, input we will concentrate more on first and second only why many and you will find just now the first order and second order are some typical behavior and any other system third fourth fifth seventh 20th 100 order system all of them will have their characteristics similar to either the first order system or the second order system there's a difference between the two i'll tell you uh, that's why we we try to study more in depth the first and second order and approximate the higher order into the first and second order system two term few terminologies impulse response the input is impulse output is what that's impulse response input is a step output is what what is output so that is step response and uh, i have just tell, told you rt is delta t r is one cs equal to this transfer function into rfs so that i call gfs into rfs okay of course um, let me come to the first order system here i am going to quite fast a simple rc or rl system etc Uh, C by R is some K by T S plus one. K could be three, T could be point five, something like that. C of T equal to K into one minus E power of minus T by two. And for various times, T equal to zero, T equal to capital T, and T is tending towards infinity. What is C of T? When T is zero, uh, this is E power of zero, one minus one zero. So C zero is zero. When t equal to capital T, one minus e power of minus one, that is point six three two k. And if t is extremely large, the second term becomes zero. So k into one that becomes k. And uh, <coughs> put, for example, in this equation, C S by R L, <coughs> S equal to zero. You have got k by one. That exactly is what you got here. Uh, this steady state uh, uh, value, steady state value you got here, is um, when s equal to zero. And uh, when uh, when you when you catch this one, you have a. You look at this. Uh, there is a smooth graph coming from zero, going towards. A steady point level after a very long time. So this value is k. That is steady state value. So this is the typical nature of any first order system: biological, chemical, engine, mechanical, electrical. Any any first order system with the coefficients positive t is positive, one is positive. They are all. Having same nature, this is an important, very, very quite uh, critical thing we should uh, remember. So, if you find uh, any response to a step, step means uh, uh, this is a step. You know? Any response of any system of this nature, any system has a response as time goes. The output goes something like this. I don't bother about here. Leave this point. This goes like this. Then you can approximate that to a first order system. Approximate, I said. How good? That's all dependent. Okay. Now, some examples of uh, first order systems are given here. I would prefer you to derive these equations here instead of x being the moment of m, the mass. Rate of change of x, that is v, velocity is taken as the variable. So this v is nothing but x dot. But we are, we want you to try to derive these equations as I have shown over here, just to make you quite <coughs> comfortable with your first order system. Okay. Now let us go to the most important second order system. Second order system is a very, very, very critical, and uh, no control system. Yes, no control system book would uh, 
like to miss this part. They, they will dedicate their whole life in analyzing the, um, uh, the, the, the second order system. Hello? Okay. Let us see. Is it okay? Did you? Uh, okay. Hello. In the second order system has a generic transfer function. We call generic means a generally used of this type. This looks a little uh, difficult, but it is not difficult. It has been made conveniently usable. So we have a, a C by R transfer function, omega n square. Okay, this omega n square. Omega n square by s square plus two into some zeta into omega n in s plus omega n square. So when s equal to zero, this is going to be omega n square by omega n square equal to one. That's the idea behind it. Let us see if it is some other number. This zeta, we uh, I I will name this uh, well in advance. Uh, you will understand why it is so. Uh, this zeta is called, this zeta is called the damping factor, damping coefficient, or simply a damping function, factor. Uh, I would request the teachers to write zeta something like this. Something like this. Not this, some books, some people have seen class notes. This zeta, just look like zeta. It is a, a picture of a face without eye. Uh, this is a way you should write zeta. Excuse me. No. Yes. Now let us uh, call zeta has many values, can have various re re regions of value. One value is zeta is less than one. Zeta is equal to zero is another value. Zeta is more than one. We will see all those things, how they differ. Zeta is less than one, then you cannot factorize the denominator with any first order terms with the real roots. We cannot do that. That's why it is uh, important, I said, very, very specific. Now, when we, when we take this into your, um, When you take um, the derivation, you should carefully uh, split. Only this many steps are required to derive the step response for a second order z less than one. That is called under damped. I have seen in some notes, some students that undamped their right. They don't, this under damp, uh, this D, yeah, they miss. It should not be, you stress this point because undamped is different from under damped. Okay. Uh, C is equal to the GS into one by S, the step input. Partial fractions put S equal to zero, the coefficients will be equal to one, so one by S minus Denominator is S square plus something. Adjust the numerator so that it is equal to omega n square. And uh, this S square plus two times into something in the, yes, I can write it as S plus zeta omega n whole square. So this, if you, if you take the first two terms alone, if you take the first two terms alone, 
you can uh, take it as s plus zeta omega n whole square. Yes, s square plus two zeta omega n s plus zeta square omega n square. That's a missing term. Subtract that zeta square omega n square plus omega n square. And that becomes omega n square into one minus zeta square, which I call as omega d square. This is a very typical term called a damped frequency, damped, damped oscillatory frequency, omega d. Now, the rest is only simple uh, making of s plus uh, two zeta omega n s, s plus zeta omega n and zeta omega n s. So this way and uh, uh, this way you split. This, this is something like uh, uh, s square plus a square and here is a, a by s square plus a square. And this is something like s by s square plus a square. S by S square plus S square is cos A T. A by S square plus S square is uh, sin A T. So we have this one as a cos omega D T and zeta by this one into sin omega by T. Multiply this, take out this root of one minus zeta square outside. This has come from this ratio, okay, omega D by omega. If you take out this, this becomes uh, something in the cos, something in the sine. See the triangle here. This is an import, this is a very, very effective triangle for understanding the second order system. The, the, the effective triangle, I say. Zeta omega n, see the roots of this are minus zeta omega n plus r minus j omega d will be the roots because zeta is less than one. So this becomes zeta omega n minus and the plus minus only one I have shown, the other one will be down below. So. Uh, z minus zeta omega n and omega d, if you take a triangle comprising these two as a side elements consisting of 90 degrees, then this angle is called a psi angle or the damping angle we call. Cause of this is omega zeta omega n by omega d, nothing but uh, zeta itself. So we call uh, this as damping angle. So we get uh, the output is uh, one minus some constant in the e power of minus zeta omega nt in the sine of something we get. So that uh, is any that is what it is. Look at this once again. It has got a decaying term e power of minus uh, so one minus. Suppose this uh, you forget the sine omega d term. You have one minus something in the e power of minus zeta t minus a t something. So one minus e power of minus t is a, of nature. The drawing will be of this nature. Okay, minus e power of minus a t will be something like this. It's something like a first order system. But this multiplied by sine omega t. So the sine omega t will introduce some oscillations here. So we will have a, a plot or a sketch of this one. It will be something like uh, you can see this. Something like this. It is something like this. Okay. And something like this. All the two red together. So we have got um, the uh, response of uh, the uh, second order under damped system. Few terminologies are, are noteworthy here. The first time it goes up, maximum shoot comes down, then later on it settles down. You take, for example, a moving iron ammeter, if you have got old type of, not digital meter, moving iron ammeter, if you have got, or any meter where it has got a needle to read. If, it, if, you, if you have the, uh, the, the moving iron ammeter, Suppose the current it has to read is at one ampere. It won't straight away go to one ampere. It will go beyond one ampere, maybe 1.2. Then it may go to 0.93. Then it may go to 1.1. Then 0.97. And so on and so forth. It settles down to two. Moving iron. Moving coil, if you see, will straight away slowly go. And that will go to this is something like a first order. This is something like a second order. So the first time it goes to maximum, that is M peak. That is why in Amitage there will be a small stud at the maximum point with a red line there. 
So the pointer should not go beyond that. If it hits, pointer will break that. So, so the first peak and the time at which the first peak occurs. We'll come back to this definition. <coughs> so we have the first peak here. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Oh. We have the first peak here. Okay. Can you see me? The first peak here, and the time at which it occurs. And it settles down to one here. Now, look at a point here, something like what I have, there's a T, uh, yes, uh, marked here. Once your oscillations come within that, it, it goes within a specific uh, band. That band is limited by this envelope, e power of minus eta omega n t. This envelope is e power of minus eta omega n t, exponentially decaying envelope. And uh, the time it once goes inside that envelope and it, re it remains, at what time it starts? At ts. Before here it goes out and comes out. Okay. Here, what happened is remains within a band. What's the band? See, this is steady state one. Delta is small amount. So 1.01, 1.02, 1.05, something like that. So if it is within that 0.05 or 0.01, the delta value, it's a band. Okay, we can say that it is more or less settled down. Okay. So the time it takes from when it settles within that band is called a settling time. The time of occurrence of M peak, time of settling down. A few more things as um, uh, TR and TD, the definitions only. TR is a rise time. First time it rises from 0.1 to final value to 0.9 of the final value. That is 10% of the final value to 90% of the final value to go how fast it goes. See, if it is more vertical, it will be shorter time. If it is more flat, it will be longer time. So that tells you how flat is there, how quickly it goes. So this is a TR. The TD is a time when it is at 50% first time. Okay, we'll, we'll come to that. Here are some uh, uh, ways of defining the systems. I will go only the definitions and rest you can see the uh, derivations yourself. Zeta is zero is called undamped, no damping. That uh, second order system S square plus two zeta omega and S plus omega in square. Zeta is zero means omega square by S square plus omega square. This purely uh, Laplace transform of a sine function or a cos function, depending upon numerator. Zero less than zeta less than one is what you have just seen under the damped case. Zeta equal to one. Look at this. Zeta is zero. Zeta is zero and one. Yeah, zeta is equal to one. That is, zeta is slowly I'm increasing from zero. When it is equal to one, it's called a critically damped. That means uh, there you can factorize the denominator. You can see the denominator s plus omega in the whole square. And uh, the output will be one, okay. Look at this. Two terms, e power of minus omega n, there's no zeta, e zeta is one, exponential of one decay, and t into exponential, the same decay, e power of minus omega n t, the same decay term, minus omega n into t and e power of minus omega n. If omega n is larger, this will be larger terms, that's all. And if omega is much larger than one, that's the only time when you can factorize the denominator into linear real coefficient, real uh, root terms, okay? Then you can factorize this like S plus something in the S plus some other thing. You can find uh, uh, the response, step response as, so some constants, I want to say e power of minus P1t and e power of minus P2t, depending on which is larger, this will be left or right. And this is just a exponential term. We'll see the term and see how it is. Look at this. Look at this. Um, this is the, for various values zeta, I have uh, plotted the step response. 
On the right hand side, you see that uh, oscillatory zeta equal to zero. That is this uh, top one. It is simply oscillatory. Okay. Of course, you must leave the first two oscillations. Then only it, it you have to settle them. Second one is under damp. What we have um, uh, seen just now. It is of any of these things. Uh, less than one and more than zero. Point two, point five, point eight. Uh, but zeta equal to one. Do you look at this? Zeta equal to one precisely looks like a first order. You remember that I said when we are talking about the first order system, closely resembling the response of the first order. This is not a first order. This one is a second order system, in which you have got two terms. When zeta equal to one, you factorize the denominator as s plus omega n whole square. That means denominator consists of two products of two first order terms. Remember this: product of two identical first order terms. This you must stress to the boys. So this is not a first order system. This is second order system, which has got two first order cascaded. Okay, two first order cascading. So this also looks like a first order. Now. Let me see if a higher order system has a characteristics like this, or that a first order. The difference will lie in the beginning, in the in the when when it begins. When it begins, this is a place where the difference will lie. Now. Okay, I just. Okay. okay. The difference lies um, in the beginning. That is, when t is closer to the zero value, the rest are jump, jumping like a first order. So, if you have got a plot of this nature, that means um, the the uh, the initial initial value is something straight like this. This is a stage, but this shows that this is not a first order only. It's a product of first orders. Okay. And uh, I give an example here, which I would request you to work out. When zeta has these values minus two, minus one, one, one uh, up to one, and then more than one, what are the values of the denominator? And say what I have written your unstable system, etc. We'll come to that. What do you mean by that? Well, I will take only one example here. But uh, if this is your uh, denominator term. So we have got e power of uh, if you take time response e power of three point seven three two into t. This is plus. So this will exponentially increase. It will never come down. It will never go like this. So this is uh, unbounded. It goes unbounded. So that's why it's called uh, unstable. We will see that. Um, And um, we will go to the specification, which we can please attend carefully. This uh, specification. There are many more ways of specifying. I given some typical example. The peak overshoot. I want a system in which a peak overshoot should not be more than a specific value. So we say that steady value is uh, let us say hundred. Then the peak first peak should not be more than one twenty. That means. I don't expect a twenty percent peak to occur. Peak must be less than twenty percent. That's the meaning. So the percentage of peak is referred to by the, the the control system engineers is based on the steady state value. So if in our example is one, so if if I say that the the uh, M peak should not exceed twenty uh, percent, so the maximum first maximum should be one point two. So this. Should be less than we say. So this e power of minus pi zeta by root of one minus zeta square should be less than one. So this, if I specify the peak, it specifies the zeta. That is a, that is the thing you should uh, uh, take to the students. If you specify the m peak, you are specifying zeta because this consists only of zeta. 
So what is the value for zeta you must say? Remember, higher the zeta, lower will be the m peak. As zeta increases, the, the m peak will be lesser. That is a, a point you must note down. Okay, the time of peak is the next one. Now the peak, I don't bother, but it, first a peak should occur within one second, within 0.3 seconds, within 0.07 seconds, something like that. So the TP, the peak time, will be uh, mentioned. If TP is mentioned, TP is the formula for TP, that is for definition, pi by omega d, that is pi by omega n into 1 minus eta square. This meant for zeta is less than 1. Already there is no peak. This also is stressing point. So this uh, zeta is less than 1 is also a stressing point. So TP, uh, the peak should be within, uh, if the peak should occur within 5 seconds, within 2 seconds, within 0.7, something like that you say. That, that means this TP value cannot be fixing if omega n or zeta. Its combination will fix. So in order to uh, go for a, a design, you should have one more specification. Maybe peak. So peak will fix zeta. TP will fix zeta and omega or omega d. So solving these two, you may be able to get the value of zeta and omega. Settling time is another one. There are two settling times, 5% settling time and 2% settling time. What do you mean by that one? It should settle within 2% of the final value. If final value is 1, it should be within uh, 1.2 to 0.98. One, the, 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 the curve goes within that band, it should not go outside. So what's the first time it goes? 5%. 5% means uh, 1.05 to 0.95, that band. So this 2%, lower the percentage, stricter is the specification. So usually we say the 5% is meant for commercial, that's commercial or classic, normal, civil specification. 2%, sometimes 1%, 1% is very difficult. 1% uh, TAC is specified for defense. Very, very strict, to the point it should be there. I mean, if you hit a target, if, that, if, if the, the bull, bullseye is a, a point for, uh, the point where the target has to go, it can go within about uh, uh, 0.1 millimeter, sorry, one millimeter of that circle. So they should as close as possible. The race time is how fast. Sometimes you don't want a fast race. Where? I'll tell you. When many of the professors sit in their uh, office chair, if they sit or you go in a bike and you are a pillion driver, you are behind the driver. If there's a small bump, it goes up. You should, you should come back to the normal position, not immediately, as if you are uh, hammered down. Just slowly with slight oscillations, you should come down. So you should not either jump too fast, come back to a position too fast. You should come slowly. So TP is a rise time. I don't want a quick rise. Nor a very, very slow rise means it will take a long time for you to settle down. So a comfortable, ergonomically convenient time, TR. This, this also specifies zeta and omega n. So for TR, TS, or TP, they will fix never by their own spirits. MP must also be specified so as to design a second order system or its uh, controllers. Okay. I have given uh, well, hardly some time. Can you wait? Overshoot is less than, there are some poles. Poles are the roots of a square to zeta omega n s plus omega n square. If overshoot MP is less than some value, overshoot should be less than this one. Overshoot less than means, you go back, you find that um, it is fixing zeta, okay? So it should be less than or greater than. Zeta fixes the angle. I said that the triangle. So zeta fixes this angle. So the damping must be within this ray. Peak time is should be less, TP uh, must be less than some value. So it specifies because TP is pi by 
omega d, phi by omega d tp. Therefore, tp, if I fix uh, tp, must be less than some value. So it should be uh, above, because one by omega d means lesser means that value will be higher. So the, the poles must lie on the hatched lines above omega d over here. Settling time fixes zeta and omega n. So settling time should be less than something. Higher the settling time, the poles are far off. So this is where uh, k by tm is some value we are given. Uh, k can be four or three based upon the 2% or 5% settling. And uh, the poles must lay left up. Yes. So what I want to tell is if I put one and two together, it should be in this ray, within this ray, complex uh, uh, poles, and it should be above this. That means it should be never anywhere here. The ray should be go over here. The ray can go something like this. Um, the ray can be something like this. So your poles must be above this and below this. So poles should lie somewhere here. So this is how you design uh, uh, based on uh, the uh, specific zeta. One more thing, sir, the oscillations. The oscillation is next thing which I can fix. The natural frequency and the damped frequency, both I can fix. So the limiting natural frequency, natural frequency with the zeta, with the omega d, natural frequency must be less than this one. I will tell you why it is specifically. Natural frequency must lie between two values. So the poles must lie in this shaded area. Natural frequency must be less than this. The poles must be in this circle, inside the circle. What is significance of omega? Again, they, if you go to the comfort levels, the oscillations when you sit in your uh, executive chair in your office, if it takes a lot of oscillation, it takes half, um, half an hour by the time you sit down there, it takes slowly oscillating, 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 and at uh, 9 o'clock you go, still 9.30 it is oscillating and settling down. You don't like that. And it oscillates quickly, it quickly oscillates. Oh, that also I don't like. So the omega is the natural frequency of that chair. If you observe a chair, behind the chair, there will be a small cylindrical thing in which there will be a small uh, iron or any material, any heavy spring and a small mass. That is the adjusting uh, mass spring system to adjust the natural frequency of the uh, particular chair. If you find chair is too much oscillating, it should adjust a spring. If it is too less, uh, lengthen the spring like that. Okay. And I've given some examples of um, uh, four second order systems. Side by side, I have given also the. Let me, uh, time permits, let me see. Let me see, there are two ways of uh, studying the circuit. The, the, this could be a voltage source also, another problem. This could be a voltage source, then the current here. The current source, the current is same here, then the voltage here is a reference, what you want to do it. So VL we call, and this we call as V of C. You write equations corresponding to the VL and the VC. You'll have a second order equation. If this was not a current source, this is a current source, but if it is not, it's replaced by a voltage source, then your study will be on the current through the L and V across the capacitance. So they are known as state variables, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Try these uh, problems today so that when you come tomorrow, if you have got some doubts, if you have some time, we can discuss solutions. Here also I have given some forms of the time uh, constant form, generic form. This is what I was telling you, generic form. But remember, I have added uh, an additional k here. That is just to show that the steady state value need not be equal to one always. I can have the steady state value. This value can be k. Here. In this case, it will be k. And uh, pole zero form and parametric form. These are so different forms for different designs of the controllers. You can just keep them and you can study these things out here. There is a last uh, slide on time domain response. Uh, there was no numerator term in all the things which you studied. I want to tell you something which is uh, 
and very interesting for you. If there is a zero, the uh, the uh, the transfer function will be something like this. You know, s yes, uh, plus let us say two divided by s square uh, plus four s uh, plus something like nine, something like that. It might be, or even uh, fourteen s, something like that. So it is a zero. So zero is s equal to minus two. Suppose you have got s minus two divided by etc. Then the output for a step input will be not this way. It will be something like this. It will go downside and then go up. Notice carefully there is a dip which is not studied so far. One example I can give you this dip is you may take a shower bath, hot water bath, and shower hot water shower and cold water. You are now taking a shower with a mildly hot, not very hot. But I find you find it is uh, too mild, so I want to increase the temperature of the bath. So what you do is you turn the knob to increase the temperature of the water. But you have observed it when the first the shower falls. First, it will be colder than what it was earlier. Remember correctly. It will be colder than what it was earlier when you wanted to increase the temperature. It, now that water is cooler, then slowly the temperature will rise and come to higher temperature. So this is example of where the uh, step response goes negative. If theta is the output here, the theta has become negative now. The negative from what you have a desire. Theta, the zero degree may not be the exact temperature. Some of the reference temperature you can have it. So this is what the need for studying the uh, effect of zeros. A lot of studies are there in many books. Third, fifth, and seventh, one thing, they will have at least one real pole. This is a mark to the students. This is an important thing. Any third, any odd degree terms will have definitely one real pole. It cannot escape. The real pole may be positive side or negative side. Now, step response of these stable system, 3, 5, 7, 9, all those systems, or even 4, 6, 8 system, all those things may be, listen carefully, without any overshoot. So similar to, I said, either a first order or an over damped, critically damped second order. With the damped oscillation, like zeta is less than one, so it is an under damped system. Or a pure oscillations. So it could be pure oscillation, though the oscillation may be sum of many omega ions. So multi, multi frequency oscillations. So based upon these, you can say that they can be approximated to first order or a second order system. And in a system, the poles which are dominant. Dominant means uh, you should study this, uh, which are uh, more effective. If you remove them, if you change them, there's an abrupt change. See, for example, 1 by S plus 100 and 1 by S plus 101. Both will have e power of minus 100 T or e power of minus 101 T. Not much of a difference. If you take S by 1, say, sorry, 1 by S plus 1 and 1 by S plus 2, just add 1 there. What happens? The response is e power of minus 1t, that is e power of negative of 2t. So, a lot of difference. So, a disturbance in the closer poles affects very badly the response. So, they are dominant poles. How can we modify the controller based on required damping system? Steady state performance, error, etc. yet to be studied by you. That is not a coverage of the talk today. It is 12. I will wind up at this stage. Tomorrow we will see more on some frequency responses. Come prepared. You might have a handout. Prepare the handout well so that I can go faster. Because a lot of things there you have to tell rather than work out. There are some working needed. So uh, this calls of the day. Thank you very much for the patient hearing.
and if you have any doubts you can post those doubts today itself by email if you have any doubt today perhaps i may reply you by directly by email itself okay uh, thank you very much thank you sir it was a wonderful se session uh, one of the participant is having a doubt on integrating processor on integrating process double integrator integrating process yes now uh, okay so okay, you can you can uh, you have okay let him ask uh no he just posted the comment and uh tell him one thing before we we go for the integrating process or a differentiating process both cases there can never be an ideal integrating process nor an ideal differentiating process okay integration by itself is introducing instability because uh, if if you have got a system which is of type 1 let us say it has got a 1 by s the denominator if you have integrator also introduce the open loop will have one more s that is 1 by s square it more on the uh, unstable side so what we do is instead of that you have a s plus something you take so a, a real uh, uh, pole a pole not at the origin you introduce so that the of course this has got its own effects good then good and the bad and the ugly effects it has got so similarly for a differentiator also, there is there is no there cannot be a real differentiating controller because if you have got a differentiating controller any sinusoidal input will be differentiated doesn't matter but it will be multiplied by the frequency so amplitude is unnecessarily going to be raised So if negative or positive, which is going to k, or the loop system is going to highly change, which is going to be bad on the stability. So neither you have got a D or I kind of uh, uh, the controllers. They are generally replacing by S plus some small amount, an adjustable coefficient. How much we can adjust that you have to see based upon the responses. Okay. We'll see. We'll see that. Uh, posting clearly and then try to answer you anything else sir yes, sir thank you sir thank you for a wonderful session sir if any doubts are there you can uh, mail to us and uh, yeah that's for that day and we'll meet you tomorrow for the session 3 so if you can what we can suggest i suggest is you can collect all their doubts in in one lot yes sir if they get a one mail then answering all others will also have benefit of knowing the answer. Uh, reply for such doubts sure sir okay the doubts are not uh, copyrighted yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, sir another doubt from the participant uh, for odd number it has one real pole then for even number sir no 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 it will have a pole even number it might or it might not because even number means there could be for example if you take fourth order it could be product of two second orders i am talking about denom denominator only so both may be having a, a unfactorizable uh, terminology third terms 1 by s square plus s plus 1 1 by s square plus s plus 2 it could be so you are not very sure whereas in odd degree must have at least one real pole that's it okay yes sir thank you sir Thank you for your time, sir. Uh, we'll meet you tomorrow. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Then all. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ah, uh, thank you, participants. We'll uh, wind up the session and we'll be meeting tomorrow at ten thirty.